Hi friends, it's Angie. <clears throat> oh no, look, I should turn my thing off. Decline. Uh, sorry, I really should turn my phone off. I'm busy. I'm, I'm. I swear to God, I can't talk right now. I'm recording. Well, you, I, I can't you, talk, I, George. I yeah, I saw it. I saw it, George. But George, you don't get it. I'm recording right now, so I can't talk George. right now. George Lees, Professor George Lees, and I hope to do a follow-up interview with him next week. Um, do you can? That's so sweet. Um, this is Angie, Angela Power Disney, Angela's Caches.org. I made a blog yesterday um, sharing some of Ella's links. Uh, Ella Gariva, Ella Draper, formerly uh, of the mother of the Hampstead children from the case that um, went viral in 2015. And uh, Alexi Mostras who um, presents as an independent media person on Tortoise Media with about five views on YouTube. I shouldn't, I shouldn't gloat because my YouTube is hugely suppressed. But Alexi Mostras uh, presents as independent media and yet um, the investors of Tortoise Media are connected to Davos, Wall Street and the BBC. And Alexi, if he gets triggered, um, can get things published almost instantaneously. And the first place he's published a response to my blog yesterday <clears throat> it was in The Sun, the same Sun newspaper that was hugely boycotted um, over the Hillsborough affair. And um, Rupert Murdoch, Henry Kissinger, you know, all of that, um, the same Sun newspaper, he he wrote an article in response to our blog yesterday and um, got it published today in the Sun. So I'm going to go over it because um, Alexi Mostras, I don't even know if that's his real name. Who has a name like that, really? Who has a name like that? Anybody that followed Ixa would have seen the hilarious names that, that were put forward it, it seems to be a game um but alexi mostras um yeah he did a knee-jerk reaction and his article is full of factual inaccuracies and as a i'm a semi-retired journalist another semi-retired researcher probably one of the best of the last decade sent me the link to the sun article knee-jerk response on twitter and um, I'm just going to fact check. And I prayed for you this morning, Alexi, because I know you watch. Um, I actually, there's a Bible scripture. I'm a Christian. There's a scripture that says, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to those that hate you, and pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. So I'm not taking this personally yet, Alexi. But I did pray for you this morning and I prayed like, you know, I haven't covered much the plague of the last two and a half years um, because I felt it was a, a psyop and a distraction. It was real. I got I got symptoms, you know, I didn't get needle craft. My son did and ended up four days in hospital with a grand mal seizure. Um. But I didn't go down that rabbit hole because I felt we were being engineered down it. But there is somebody that um, made a full retraction and said, you were right, I was wrong. And I pray that for you, Alexi, and any of your team that still have some journalistic integrity, I pray that although you thought you were setting out to defend these poor alleged perpetrators, I pray that um, you will actually end up like that person regarding the plague, saying, you were right, I was wrong, you know, and it's not a competition to be right. But I do need to, to just fact correct you on several levels. And um, 
The title of this video is Me Thinks the Gentleman Protested Too Much. Um, as uh, what's his name, Andrew Gold says, I, 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 I am a graduate, I have a degree in English literature, uh, and I um, speak five languages, probably three only fluently. And um, I've done a postgrad in um, sub editing and design under the Irish Times features editor, Maurice Sweeney. So I'm semi retired, my research is semi retired, but we still down but not out. So I'll just go to this article, share screen. So literally, we put my blog out about 2.30 yesterday, and by 9.30, um, Alexi, although pertaining to be alternative media, but within hours, he can secure a spot in mainstream media. The last, uh, the last blog we did that triggered him he managed to get about five articles out in different British mainstream media newspapers. So I'll just I'll just deconstruct this uh, <clears throat> unemotionally and praying that Alexi is not part of the darkness, but maybe just not informed. I don't know. Maybe I, I might be being naive. Right now, this is the article. Horror hoax. How tales of posh mums drinking babies' blood turned into UK's most dangerous conspiracy and is still ruining lives now. And I pray that you consider the children. So, I'm Ella Gariva Draper. The woman says, speaking directly into the camera. This video, actually, by Ella, was made quite a while ago but it's only just hitting, you know, hitting the public, not not on the level that Alexi Mostos, the Indo reporter who has multiple connections to mainstream media still and can get things published within hours in newspapers like The Sun. Um, I have other videos discussing Duckenworth, in whose home myself and my siblings stayed as children, who was best friends with my uncle, Anthony Power, founder of Panache, and a victim of what I believe was a hit, uh, beaten to death by a seemingly uh, MK altered assassin who, who got 26 years in jail for the murder. But that's a sidetrack, but just beware, the Sun newspaper, Rupert Murdoch. So I'm fighting for my own children. This has never ceased for the last seven years. Now, and here we go. So he's posting photos of Ella on vacation or in sunny climes. There's immediately a narrative starting. And as we go on, you'll see that he makes the father, Ricky Dearman, anonymous, but doxes, quote unquote, Ella all over the shop, including with photographs. So mum, Ella Draper, came to her children were horrifically abused by a satanic cult whilst at primary school in Hampstead, North London, pictured sunning herself in Spain. I wish you good luck. I don't know if you're a father, Alexi. But I wish you good luck with trying to uh, come to terms with losing your children. And then here we go again. This is this old chestnut. Ella started dating Abraham Christie, who made her children drink hemp smoothies and asked them to call him Papa Hemp. I think you will find all of that was organic. I've had my fallings out with both Abe and Ella, but there is a lot of medical science in favour of the hemp plant having medicinal uses. And um, I actually, I'm a dilettante with hemp or cannabis or, you know, the medicinal thing. And I think my brain has been fried from so many childhood experiments 
that I just don't do well with any mood altering or mood correcting substances. But there's much evidence to to confirm that this was a plant, a herb. Uh, and I don't believe Abe forced the children to either drink smoothies or call him Papa. Another, you know, the, like I, I'm a subby, so I know the power of photographs and titles and editing. And uh, here we go. I, I actually believe this is even a little bit photoshopped. I suspect a bit of photoshopping around the eyes. Abraham and Ella's Hampstead hoax. Uh, really, has left a trail of destruction and is still hurting people, alleged paedophiles that have never even been questioned. Following two witness allegations in great detail, uh, no, never been questioned, right? Ella sounds educated and sensible. She is. She's a bit you know, she's out there with yoga and veganism and stuff like that. She's a bit new age, but she's educated and she is sensible, which makes which makes what the striking 50-year-old is saying on videos placed on social media. <laughs> you might as well subscribe to my blog. Uh, whatever your name is, sorry, I can't retain it because I don't think... Alexi, I don't think it's a real... You might be Alexander, I don't know, but monstrous. No, I'm not sure about that at all. Anyway, sound all the more shocking. Her two children, she claims, were horrifically abused by a satanic cult while still at primary school in Hampstead, North London. Yeah. Home to celebrities, including actress Helena Bonham Carter. Now, I'm curious as to why you've selected... Helena Bonham Carter to name. So actually, to any researchers out there, I would say go a little deeper on that because why would Alexi select her name out of the hundreds, if not thousands, of celebs, of mini-celebs that live in and around Hampstead? Instead of investigating the cult, the police covered it up, Ella alleges, 100%, 100%. She says organised child abusers are above the levels of law enforcement suspicion. That's also true and much corroborated. It's time humanity puts an end to this industry, indeed. It's hard not to feel sympathy for Ella. Well, hopefully that's a tiny fraction of your conscience, um, Alexei, trying to break through either the... Um, Cognitive dissonance you suffer from or the complicit uh, participation, I don't know which at this stage. She says police corruption forced her to flee Britain in 2015, leaving her children in the hands of the cult. Now, I fought long and hard. I don't think I personally would have fled. And yet, when I see people like Anchor Hill being sentenced to 50, years plus in jail for trying to report ritual abuse of her child in Anglesey and Cornwall I think with hindsight Ella did the right thing and it's very sad to think that you have to flee the country in which your children are held captive in order to continue fighting for them she has not seen them since. Not for want of trying, before Ella fled under severe persecution um, and intimidation, there were many attempts to see the children which were frustrated, right? So I've reported on this right from the get-go. The children disclosed in August 2014. It went public in February 2015. And... I started covering it since then. So um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I've been there. I've been there. I've interviewed Abe, Ella multiple times. I've been to protests outside Hampstead Christchurch. I've been to church services inside 
Hampstead Christ Church, I'd been interviewed by Melanie Abbott of Radio 4, who mistakenly thought I was a Hampstead resident and would go with the narrative. And then, of course, my interview and that of a fellow protester who looked middle class or whatever were not included in the Radio 4 Melanie Abbott uh, programme. But I, I have trucked with this from the get-go. So, Alexei Mostras, I wish somebody would do some research on his birth cert and so on. Um, not to stalk, but uh, it just seems a very unlikely name. But anyway, but as I was to find when investigating this story for my podcast, hoaxed, almost nothing that comes out of Ella's mouth is the truth. That's a pretty sweeping statement, Alexei. Ella, along with her legal team and her worldwide research and professional expert teams has mountains of evidence. Where's yours? So fairly, you know, knee-jerk, reckless statement, almost, almost nothing that comes out of Bella's mouth is the truth. She is at the centre of what I believe, me, Alexei Mosteros, is Britain's most serious online conspiracy. A modern day satanic panic. <laughs> God forgive you, Alexei. That shows how quickly lies can spread online and the failure of both the police and social media giants to crack down on them. Mm -hmm. The truth has no fear, Alexi. Why would, uh, if you feel that people are spreading lies, they will die a natural death. Um, if it's the truth, no amount of cracking down is going to work. A modern, yeah, I've read that. The Hampstead hoax. Oh, you've entitled and you you've created a new title, have you? We call it the Hampstead cover up. So, thank you for your opinion has left a trail of destruction and is still hurting people. Yeah, most of all the children. The children's dad has been forced into hiding after being falsely targeted as a paedophile. And internet trolls have uh, attached dozens of other Hampstead families attacked Dozens of other Hampstead families after their names appeared on a list of 175 alleged cult members comp compiled by Ella and posted online. Okay, again, we see the journalistic bias, the propaganda. The mother was forced to flee the UK to be able to continue to uh, advocate for her children. And yet you say the father has been forced into hiding. Now, I have personal experience with this, Alexi Mostros. The father put himself and the children in the full international glare of publicity by participating in an eBay promotional advertisement campaign around 2017. He put himself and the children right slap bang back in the public eye using fake names, but undeniably, unmistakably Ricky Dearman and the children. When I blogged about it the next day, and I didn't even say, this is Ricky and the children, I used the fake names because like you, I trained in journalism and I knew to watch how I handled this. But everybody that followed the case closely knew who it was and what he'd done by thrusting the children and himself back in the public eye and I blogged about it. And the next day, Hoaxstead Research, which I'll show later on, you've wrongly identified the where that name came from. Um, 
they blew they blew it up and she's revealed Ricky Dearman and the children. <gasps> oh my god. No, I didn't. I used the fake names that were used in the eBay promotional. I also used the promotional video, which was public domain, and photos from same. Ricky then flew to Ireland, uh, tried to file a harassment claim against me. He'd had great success in getting campaigners imprisoned, cautioned, sectioned, harassed, smeared, character assassinated. So he came to Ireland thinking, right, now I've got Angie, she's she's exposed myself and the children. No, you did that, Ricky Dim. So the hypocrisy that really annoys me, part of it in this article, is that Alexi Mostras feels good about quote-unquote doxing Ella and Abraham, complete with photos, and then gives Ricky Dimon a fake name and says he's in hiding. Who in hiding takes part in an eBay international promotional video with millions of views? Who does that? Come on, Alexi. Hiding my ass. Right. Forced into hiding, right. It contains, right, okay. Vile accusations, that's very emotional for a journalist. Vile accusations have been placed against some of the names, claiming they were Satanists who had sex with children and practiced child sacrifice, drinking their victims' blood, trigger warning, sorry people, and dancing with baby skulls. Um, you know, watch eyes wide open. Watch, um, what's that to... Uh, I can never remember. It goes in and out of my brain. But anyway, there's a movie about Adrena Crone like decades ago. Howard uh, Hunter Thompson, Hunter S. Thompson movie about Adrena Crone. Adrena Crone's out of just Google it, people. One mother named was so stressed she struggled to sleep for four years. If the children's allegations were true, Insomnia would have been the least of their problems. Come on, stop this stupid fucking virtue signaling. Struggle to sleep for four years. I've struggled to sleep just from reporting on this case. Another said of her daughter, on many occasions she had woke, she has woken in the middle of the night in tears. Yeah, about the children that were being, well, I wonder why she was waking in tears actually. I wonder if you actually thought outside the box and asked her why she was waking up in tears. Was it because of the false reporting or something else? Quote, we have received death threats by phone, email and social media. We have had to instruct our daughter not to answer the phone. So how did it get to this point, says Alexi? Ella's story starts in the 1990s when the Russian, uh, and that's highlighted, uh, yeah, take all the advantage you can from the current uh, anti-Russian sentiment propaganda. Uh, go ahead. I wonder what, I won't even click on that, I can't be bothered. Born art history graduate turned yoga teacher, got married to a wealthy English banker and moved to Hampstead, yes. Draper, I can't remember his first, I think it might be Will Draper. Worth researching people. Allegedly also cult involved. After they split up a few years later, Ella started a relationship with an actor called David. How dare you, Alexi? How dare you dox the mother of these children and her then partner and call Ricky Dearman David? Seriously. And they had two children. Yet by 2014, they were locked in an ugly cost custody battle. That is not true. Ricky Dearman renounced parental rights in around 2011 and emigrated to Los Angeles, California, for a couple of years, where he connected with various Clinton-related foundations and tried to get famous. He he did a promo video, Love for Haiti, and he advertised himself willing to house sit, cat sit, dog sit, anything sit, 
in and around Hollywood so he could try and get famous. So the custody battle was absolutely not an issue in 2014. He had he had walked away from his parental rights around 2011. You can fact check all of this. And as many people have said, even if your narrative was true that in 2014 custody came up again, no mother would make up what the children disclosed in up to 34 video clips, not the police retraction interviews, which were discredited by the international IPCC, um, no, Independent Police Complaints Commission. They upheld a complaint that the police quote-unquote retraction videos appeared to have been led by interviewer DC Steve Martin. That was upheld. But then he got promoted both in the police to Detective Sergeant and in the local Freemasonic Lodge to Almana. So how dare you mount this as a custody battle gone wrong? Any sane mother, even going along with your false narrative of a custody battle, would not in a million years have been able to have the children disclose what they disclosed in uh, up to 34 video clips, 17 of which are posted on my blog. Um, that's not to promote my blog. That's just to say that Alex, Alexi never refers to the children's original disclosures. He bases his whole quote unquote investigation on the police retraction videos, which the IPCC, now the IOPC, went on to discredit. I'll try not to get too emotional. Right. Ella started dating a new man, Abraham Christie. Now, I do feel that Ella's made some bad choices in partners, but uh, Abraham Christie, not an ideal partner at all, but not a child abuser, in my, not a child sexual abuser, in my opinion. Not a, definitely not a satanic ritual abuser, in my opinion, which I can't say for the other two. Abraham, now 66, believed hemp, the herb from which cannabis is derived, to be the giver of life. Well, yeah, he's a bit passionate about it, but it does have a lot of positive properties. He made, no, he didn't. That's a lie. He's a lie. He made Ella's children drink hemp smoothies and asked them to call him Papa Hemp. You know, the kids might have asked him, what do we call you? They loved him. They couldn't believe that they could finally have a safe space to say what had been happening to them for as long as they could remember. In July 2014, the family went on holiday to Morocco. That's true. Now, I think Ella and Abe had only got involved around May so, and I think it was actually August 2000. Your, your research is shoddy, Alexia. I don't know if you've got a team, but the research is shoddy. I think it was August they went to Morocco, but correct me if I'm wrong. Ella and Abraham claim it was there that the children, then both under 10, yeah, they were eight and nine, told them about being abused by their father. He says, David, I say, Ricky. By teachers at their school, yes. 84 died and many others. And by fellow parents, yeah, and by the priests, Father Paul Conrad, and by uh, Kafka's people, police. You know, the, it was extensive. It was horrendous. When they returned to London, the children repeated the allegations to police. Yeah, the first person they redisclosed to was Jean Clement, brother-in-law of Abe and um, special constable, uh, you know, and, and, and a very wise man. And the children disclosed in such detail. To me, nobody could have made the children, uh, nobody could have coached the children into their disclosures. If you watch the 17 video clips on my blog or my bit shoot, you would be challenged 
to think, oh yeah, some torture and some hemp made these children corroborate each other's stories and no details that could not be known, could not be memorized, could not be hypnotized, could not be, you know, I'll eat my hat if, if that's the case. And he says, I've seen a video of their interviews where they describe how the cult carried out horrors, including baby sacrifice in the local church. Yeah, I've seen them too. And as I say, they're on my blog, they're on my pitch, they're in other places too. I had help from Christiane Sands and from somebody in France and from somebody in England. This is all about team. The police searched the church. I was in the church, Alexi. Video was taken of blood, what appeared very convincingly to be blood, on the floor, on the tiled floor of the church. The police did not uh, forensically search the church. And um, the most they did was give a passing nod. And lo and behold, very shortly afterwards, the church underwent, quote unquote, renovations. God forgive you. I, I, I'm still hoping you're just not doing a good job, Alexi. In mid-September, the police interviewed the children again. And this time they changed their story. Yeah, they had been taken from their mother. Five days after being taken from their mother, after the trauma of disclosing at aged eight and nine, horrendous abuse from as early as they could remember and corroborated by seeing pictures of themselves on their dad's computer in infancy, in infancy being abused. These children disclosed, they thought they were safe. Finn Barr of UK Column and others told them they were safe, Abraham did too. And then when they go to tell the police, Steve Martin and so on, they are taken, and I would allege kidnapped from their mother. Utter, utter re-traumatization. Five days later, they start to do police retraction videos appearing severely drugged and attempt to retract, which the Independent Police Complaints Commission upheld, appeared to have been led by DC Steve Martin. They told police the truth that they had been pressured into lying by Ella and Abraham. It's, to me, scientifically impossible. If you watch the original disclosures, you show me children anywhere in the world that could disclose in that detail, corroborated by one another, uh, on no matter how many times attempts were made to throw them off, you show me children anywhere in the world that could have been coerced into that kind of disclosure. But he, he declares, this is again, you are outrageous, Alexei. They told police the truth. That they had been pressured, I'm sorry, I'm getting passionate into lying. And that Abraham had kicked them, hit them on the head with a metal spoon. Have you heard them disclose about Ricky Dearman hitting them on the head with wooden spoons? Have you heard particularly Gabriel's disclosures about his dad damaging his ear with physical abuse. Have you seen the police reports of domestic violence where Ricky Dearman brutally beat Ella and her mother, the children's grandmother? Have you looked into the evidence, Alexi Mostras? Question mark. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Poured water over their heads so they couldn't breathe until they said exactly what he wanted. Now, I don't, of course, endorse 
I raised my children with corporal punishment, like spanking, we called it, not corporal punishment, like, you know, a wooden spoon, a slipper, whatever, uh, you know, a, a broken wooden tea bar from school. I, I, I'm i 65 and my generation believed that if children were really naughty, you spanked them, you know, I... I I kind of, and it's in the Bible, you know, like spare the rod, spoil the child. And I do think that the youth of today are kind of entitled and out, out of control. Um, but, you know, with my grandchildren, I didn't, I, I learned time out and um, other ways, you know. But um, if you went deeper to this, the children were trying to disclose, particularly to Abraham, but the programming was so strong. They had been so brutalized to stay silent that I think it was Elisa said, you have to hurt us to make us speak because they hurt us so badly to make us stay quiet. We can't tell you, we can't tell you. So. They did some some really out there ways to have the children break programming. And I don't endorse them, but nor do I believe that they could have created this story, this narrative, this dis these disclosures by two children aged eight and nine, disclosing in real time about satanic ritual abuse. Um, yeah, this in mid September, the police interviewed the children again, and this time they changed their story. Blah blah blah. The police closed the investigation. Shame on you, police. Shame on you. Wow, but extraordinarily, they did not bring in Abraham for questioning let alone arrest him on suspicion of child abuse. Uh, not so extraordinary if you do your proper research, Alexi Mostras. The case then, I'm trying to just get through this because it's just making me so angry, but I'll just correct the glaring lies and inaccuracies. The case then moved to the family courts where a judge had to decide who would have custody of Ella and... <laughs> quote unquote David, who's Ricky Dearman's children. Ella chose to represent herself, good girl, meaning she got access to all the evidence, including videos of her kids. Don't call them kids, that's little goats, which is a, uh, associated with Satanism and sacrifice. The children being interviewed by the police and other sensible material, <laughs> sensitive materials such as their medical reports. Sensitive, are you insane? Do you think the mother of these children was not entitled to medical reports of her own children who reported chronic, horrendous ritual abuse from as early as they could remember? The medical reports by Dr. Deborah Hodes confirmed chronic uh, gentle injuries. Uh, scarring anal scarring vaginal issues uh, just horrendous horrendous and trying to shift trying to negate that and put abe and ella in the spotlight when abraham had only been in the children's lives a matter of months who caused the chronic scarring and the chronic injuries long term healed over, injured again, healed over, injured again. Who caused that before Abraham was your scapegoat? God forgive you. Right. Ella chose to write, yeah. At this point, Ella sought the help of Sabine McNeil, an informal legal advisor known as a Mackenzie friend. He really tries to do a number on Sabine. She's more qualified than you could hope to be in your 60s, Alexi Mostras. She worked at CERN. She's a mathematical genius. She spoke in the European, um, uh, you know, she spoke about forced adoption and the dangers of this new law of 
taking children at risk of future emotional harm. She's done more with her life. <sighs> God forgive you. God forgive you. So he, uh, you know, he puts her down. A person who attends a trial as a non-professional helper <laughs> or advisor to a litigant, blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's so see-through. I, I just, I'm so upset with this, Alexa. Conspiracy blogs. Sabine had long believed family courts were corrupt, as they were, as was a, a, a not... Bernard Mumby, Sir Bernard Mumby wouldn't go so far as to say it's corrupt, but he did say they're not working, they're not fit for purpose. And you will find that there are pilot schemes now being rolled out for the secrecy of the family courts to be reversed, Alexi Mostras. There's three pilot schemes unrolling in the UK very soon. She was convinced they stole thousands of children a year. Uh huh. Yeah, many people are, especially the mothers. So when Sabine thought the judge in Ella's case was going to take away her children, she decided to do something drastic. You know, I've met Sabine many times. I've interviewed her many times. I'm still on the fence whether Sabine reached her brave frustration level or... CC'd a trusted blogger who leaked and met, let the videos go viral. I'm still on the fence whether she deliberately leaked the disclosure videos or whether she naively shared them with Tap Wire, I can't remember the name of the blog, but not realising that he or she was going to put them public and they were going to reach millions. In January 2015, she took Ella's confidential material, the videos of the children's police interviews, their medical reports, and put it all online. She didn't. She actually wrote to Theresa May, appealing for help, and CC'd in a blogger that she trusted who put it all online. She also published a list of supposed cult members named by Ella and personal details of the 175 people she said were involved in the abuse now, this was never proven. In her court case, they couldn't decide if it was myself or Sabine that compiled. Now, Sabine would make a database, what you call it, an Excel spreadsheet on everything. She's a mathematical genius. She's a, you know, I don't know. If, anyway, she makes spreadsheets and documents everything. It's just, she's a scientist. That's what I'll say. Um, so... You know, and the, and the, those lists, again, I don't, I don't know. I just think Sabine's motives were good and always good and based on a lot of evidence. The videos of the, I'm going to call them children, initially telling police that there was a cult, were soon trending on conspiracy blogs across the US and Britain. What about the original disclosure videos, Alexi Mostras? I don't like this energy. I don't like being angry with people. The family court judge was furious. Oh, Justice Anna Porfley, you know, the judge that re retired, exceeding young for a British judge, and moved back to Israel, Justice Anna Porfley. Sending police to Ella's house to get an explanation. What, 12 of them? 12 of them? Sending on conspiracy... Right. Why such sensitive data was now in the public domain? Because every domain of the justice system, Kafka, social services, police had failed. And European law, of which Britain was part there then, provides for a mother to send out an SOS. No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Sorry. An SOS to the Court of Public Opinion if all else has failed. So that's what happened. Um, after stalling, stalling, I think I'd stall a bit if there were 12 coppers outside my house, hammering on the door, demanding entrance, uninvited. After stalling, Ella ran into her back garden, 
climbed the fence and ran. The next day, she fled to Spain, Abraham following a day later. Yeah, and what a disgrace a country is when mothers trying to get help have to run from the very people that were hired and paid to protect their children. The children were taken into care, then later returned to their dad. Well, I've got mixed reports on that, but, you know, I'll take your word on that because I know you're close to Ricky Dearman, aren't you, Alexi? A few days after the court case concluded, thanks to Sabine's encouragement, dozens of angry protesters travelled to the Hampstead Primary School and shouted, pedophiles and murderers, oh, I'm going to get, this won't get included, and I should have, like, because you can't say those words on YouTube, at parents and teachers. One US blogger even flew to London, especially furiously threatening to kick down doors. That's an Americanism. That's a, a, an expression, a turn of phrase. It, it was intended to express that people have a right to know the truth, especially in light of horrendous allegations of brutal torture and murder of children. Kick down doors if you look into Americanisms, urban dictionaries, whatever. It's a turn of phrase. It did not matter that the family court judge issued a judgment in March 2015. Yeah, issued a judgment. Who is she? God? Who appointed her God? I missed that. She did a 12-day fact-finding mission and then issued an edict. It was like Vatican II or something. You're like, <laughs> who, who died and made these people God? I swear. Oh, my God. It did not matter that the family court judge issued a judgment in March 20, blah, blah. For those targeted, it was terrifying. Well, I'm sure it was. You know, like Mr. Hollings, who built a seven-foot wall in front of his house in Hampstead. Father what Paul Conrad, who, who was moved, actually went to Spain again, Spain, Madrid, I think it was. Father Paul Hollings conveniently moved, as priests often were, under the spotlight of abuse allegations. You know, most of the teachers accused from Hampstead Christchurch Primary School all turned up in Devon, teaching in Devon or assisting in Devon. For about a year until the dust settled. God, I'm so sorry. I'm passionate. This has got me going and I'll try not to respond anymore to Alexi because I'm accusing him of protesting too much. So let me not get sucked into this uh, major, passionate amygdala response. Uh, luckily, there was a group prepared to fight back. A group, da, 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 here they come. What Alexi fails to tell you is that they were paid for. Karen Irving's husband runs a company that specialises in reputation rescue. No, 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 no. I've got to, I've got to just tell you, please trust me that I'm broadcasting at the moment. Runs a company that specialises. <laughs> it's like, no, no, look. I'm still making the video. Please give me a minute. What, what, what? Right, I've got to just rush through the rest of this. It did not matter. The blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Maybe I just need to stop. No, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to finish this. Ah, this is sickening, right? They included a parent on Ella's list, a teacher from Birmingham, and 64-year-old mystery writer Karen Irving. She's 65. Well, actually, maybe not till October. Yeah. I think she was 65 last October 2nd. Who lived 3,000 miles away in Ottawa, Canada, 
She moved to Belsize Park, Alexi. Her and her daughter moved to Belsize Park to carry out a reputation rescue project for Ricky Dearman and the alleged Hampstead cult. Check it out. She has a sister living in London whose husband was on the board of trustees for Hampstead Christchurch School while they brought in a very questionable music, musicians and concerts and filmings of satanic films and uh, uh, just do some research, please, Alexi, unless you're part of the cover-up, please. This group started the blog, the blog Hoaxted, a wordplay on Hampstead. No, it wasn't. We had all the evidence gathering and gathering and gathering on a blog called Hampstead Research. So Karen Irving's husband's company was hired to shut it down. So they called themselves Hoaxted Research. So no, it wasn't a play on Hampstead's name. Luckily, there was a group prepared to fight back. They were paid hundreds of thousands. It's probably just, you just ask how much has um, Aaron Irving's husband's company been paid for this noble fighting back? It included a parent and blah, blah, blah. You know, this had main object, blah, blah, blah. I'll I'll post this link. It goes on to say how the group reported to Google. They got thousands of videos taken down. We got thousands of bears taken down. Believe you me, it was trolling Academy, a la Hillary Clinton, a la Swansea University, a la Seventy Seventh Brigade, a la off the charts. Uh, it's professional trolling. It's like in American. Um, politics where you do opposition research, it was just disgusting, it was disgusting so I will do a part two of this because somebody is trying to get a hold of me and getting very frustrated so I, I will share a link to this um, disgraceful disgraceful article and um, I'll do a part two and um, you know may May the truth come out in Jesus' name.